Yobios Berlin. Hi, my name is Matthias Willich, and today I want to talk to you about figures and scientific illustrations. Uh, to be honest, just until a few years ago, uh, we didn't pay that much attention to designing our figures for papers or for proposals, reports, or really for any purpose where a figure might become might come in handy. But that has really changed dramatically, I'd say, in the, in the last few years. And uh, that's in part because it seems like everybody else is up their game as well. And so a lot more emphasis is placed nowadays on producing high quality display items for your papers and proposals. And uh, because these just enhance the general readability and accessibility of the material. And they've really become important for um, having a successful paper or a successful proposal. So this is why I want to talk to you about uh, figures and how to design them successfully. Just the concepts. I mean, I'm not an artist myself, uh, but I think it will be extremely important. And I'll divide this into two parts. The first one is about concept figures and the second part is about data figures. First, some, some general comments that are important for both types of figures, so data figures and conceptual figures. And uh, they basically, the most important point is take your time. These things take time to properly plan, to execute, to improve, uh, to optimize, to play with different options which work best. So we spend quite a bit of time on various types of figures to optimize them. So don't underestimate the, the time this really takes and uh, take that into account in your planning of your manuscripts or proposals. This is the first point. Um, some other general point is pay attention to the color scheme. This is more like um, an issue for data figures, but um, some people are colorblind and so there is a color palettes available in some of the software packages that take this into account. and. You know, you should never make figures that are not accessible to all of your audience. So pay attention to this uh, color palette. And the third general point is um, make sure that your figures have the right information density. So they shouldn't look empty with like, let's say, lots of empty soil or atmosphere spaces or whatever, or um, lots of empty spaces in your in your uh, graphs for, for data. But on the other hand, they shouldn't also be overly cluttered with things that are not really necessary. So getting the information density right, I think is also important and a, and a general point. But now let's talk about uh, concept figures specifically. So uh, when we make concept figures, we, uh, or at least I, I make many, many doodles, my, my, my desk is basically cluttered with little sketches where we try things out to see um, how can I also explain something to me basically first. This is actually how, how I also usually write papers. I'm um, trying to explain it to myself in a picture. And so then I try it out on other people. And we do this also to each other in the lab and then we pick the one that works best and then we, we try to realize that particular version of a concept figure. This takes time. so. Make sure you take your time also to go through these various iterations to arrive at a very good figure. One of the things that is often a problem in uh, concept figures is, you know, often they are boxes and arrows of various degrees of sophistication. And uh, one problem that often occurs is these arrows sometimes mean different things. So if arrows mean different things, for example, in some cases they mean material or energy fluxes, flux of carbon, for example. And in other cases they mean information or A influences B, then make sure you have used different arrow types and you have explained that in the legend. And if possible, make this uniform throughout the entire figure. So make sure that your, your various uh, elements are very clearly defined in terms of what they mean, of course. Um, but this applies specifically to arrows. What's also important is your concept figure should not surprise the reader in any way. It should be well matched with what you have written in the text. 
and emphasize the point you have made in the text. And also, it is good practice to make the concept figure and the legend that goes with it, so the description of the figure, stand alone, so that also without directly referring to the text, if, if there's a reviewer or a reader of your proposal, they can already see at first glance what this is going to be about because your figure is sufficiently self-explanatory and especially with additional uh, help given in the figure legend, it really is a standalone element. But also make sure it corresponds to your text and is not somewhere completely out there and makes a point that's unrelated to your text. Make sure that even though they may be depicting relatively complex uh, relationships, that your figures are as clean and clear as possible. So don't clutter them with um, unnecessary elements and bells and whistles that you, you add various um, graphic elements to that figure. Make it as clear as possible so people uh, people's attention is really focused on the important and salient points that the figure wishes to make. So everything in that figure should contribute to the story that you want to tell with that figure. That's, I guess, maybe a good way to think about it. So don't clutter it, but make sure every element in that figure is, is really necessary and helps uh, people understand that figure. There is a special version of a concept figure that's an info card. This is uh, more like a standalone. It can be used, um, for example, in social media to illustrate the most important points or the, the entire story um, of a paper. And this is basically the same, as I said, for the concept figure with the additional challenge, basically, that you need to <laughs> wrap up the entire story of that paper into um, one little panorama, basically. But um, all the same rules apply as for a general concept figure if you want to make an info card. And those info cards are getting more and more popular and I think they're good ways of visually summarizing papers. Now on to data figures. Now data figures are a different ballgame, even though it seems more recently Data figures incorporate more and more also conceptual information. So while they show, present the data, they also try to bring out the underlying concept that the, these data um, try to support. And so I think what we are more recently seeing is almost like more like a merging of, not all the way, but a, a movement of data figures towards becoming more conceptual. There's still a couple of things that we, we need to talk about with data figures. So I think one thing that is very important is, is even if you um, plot something more derived from your data, uh, like means of standard error or confidence intervals, it is becoming increasingly good practice and also sometimes necessary to also show your primary data points as, for example, little uh, jitter dots um, in your figure so that you also reveal your actual primary data and not just something derived from the data. I think that this is quite this is quite an important feature that um, a data figure should have. Data figure should be, at least in my opinion, fairly close to the things that you actually measure. Sure, you also deposit the data in some repository for people to access, but I think it's also very good practice to, as much as possible, in your data figures also reveal your primary data. And this is um, sometimes also required by some journals to show the individual data points in your figures in addition to measures of central tendency and variability. I think it's also a very good idea to uh, reveal the primary and important statistical information for these data. In a variety of ways, it can be additional text or it can be with uh, different symbols or different colors or whatever is uh, appropriate to the particular data that you have, but use that figure also to convey the statistical information as appropriate. A very common problem in data figures is that things are not of sufficient size, so they're very difficult to read. So make sure that your symbols are of sufficient size so that they are not microscopic and also that your, your axis labels are clearly readable and any other label that you, have, that you have in your figure, they should be of a sufficient font size. Again, some journals have specific requirements, but I think it just makes general sense to make your text in the figures 
as easily readable as possible. So, and that also applies to symbols, as I said. Uh, make sure they have sufficient size and also if you have different line types, make sure that they're really different, clearly visible line types and not just slightly darker gray and slightly lighter gray, but they should be clearly distinguishable at first sight to just make it more readable. Now, as I already said, you can also add some conceptual elements to your figure to make salient points more clearly stand out by like highlighting important parts of the figure or by, for example, if you have an ordination to sort of depict along the axis, this goes from, let's say, a smaller size to a larger size or from a more conservative strategy to a a more exploitative strategy or whatever is the context of your study, um, it might be nice to point out these features also with graphical elements, so little icons or little drawings in your figure. This is the point I said earlier that the data figures tend to become more conceptual. Related to that, also make sure, and this is also sometimes um, a problem in figures, that the most important point of your figure is clearly evident, either because the way you plotted the data or the way you highlighted that particular point. But don't make the reader or user of your figure search for uh, where is that mm, difference or where is that pattern that I'm supposed to see. Make that as easy as possible in your data figure by various means, highlighting different colors, the way you present it so that it's clear and readers don't have to wonder where that is now depicted, the point that you wanted to make. Also, don't forget that while it's clear to you what every bit in your figure means, every element in there, it may not be so to the person that sees that figure for, for the first time. So make, make sure you explain every component of that figure very clearly. Of course, the axes, especially if they're complicated axes, also the different symbol types or different lines, line types, for example, in regressions or confidence intervals or error bars or box and whiskers or whatever it is, make sure every bit in your display is also explained in the figure legend so that people are not left wondering uh, what is that. And it's also a good idea to include your sample size as much as possible. So basically give as much information as possible in that figure legend so that the figure is also clearly understood by the reader. Speaking of that figure legend, as we already said with the conceptual figure, it's important that also for the data figure, these data figures are standalone items, so they should be um, able to be understood without even referring to the text. Of course, they should also correspond to the text, but if you look at that figure, it should be clear without having to read extensively in the text what this is about, and that uh, makes it so important to spend time on writing a very good figure legend so that everything really is explained in there. There's a, a sentence maybe that also highlights the main thing that you're supposed to take from that figure. That makes the whole thing more user-friendly as a package, the figure and the figure legend together. If you want to point out different elements of your figure, or if your figure is actually a compound figure, consisting of different panels, for example, or different graphs or combinations of, let's say, microscopic pictures or graphs or whatever, make sure that you make it easy to refer to parts of that figure by putting little um, numbers or letters, journals have different requirements uh, for these panels, so you can refer in the figure legend to Panel A shows this and that, panel B shows that, so you don't make readers wonder about where you are now in your description of your figure. It's a small thing, but sometimes that doesn't go right and then it's irritating, so make sure that all your figures are properly labeled with um, little letters or numbers or even subheaders. Now, everybody does these figures in different ways. We uh, try to use R and different R packages to make our figures and that's important because trying to do as much as possible um, is our sort of collective advice from the lab in R. So you avoid introducing any mistakes as you refine and update your figure so it always goes back to your original data. And then only for the very final finishing touches of your figure export that into a vector graphics program and then uh, try to refine it 
by adding other elements that we talked about, but stay for as long as possible in uh, the R environment so you don't introduce any mistakes during the process. And of course, some people who are super good with R, they can basically do it all entirely in the R pro environment. And that is, is of course, also um, a very good feature because in the end you can provide the code and you can provide the data and then anybody can sort of rerun uh, the data with your code in the final paper and recreate these figures and also change things. That's of course great. And very often um, that's not that's not always an option, let's say, and then uh, make sure that you do the final edits then in your vector graphics program, but stay for as long as possible in the R environment. And finally, you know, as you, as we all do, read papers or grant proposals or reports, take note of some uh, really nice figures and make a little collection maybe and see like, oh man, I really like this figure. I love the, their color scheme or I like the way they depicted this and that or the way this was overall just designed looked really beautiful. So, um, you know, make yourself a little album of your, of your favorite figures that you thought were really cool and then use them as inspiration, of course. If you're a reviewer, I think it wouldn't hurt to say like, this is a nice figure. I hear that very rarely, but I think it's also just a nice thing to comment on when uh, somebody has gone the extra mile basically to make a nice figure to, to say that. And so, yeah, I think if you keep these things in mind, Maybe you'll make bigger fi better figures. And I think having better figures, uh, more accessible figures, more, more beautiful figures, it will help basically almost every step of the way. I'm, I'm quite sure. In, uh, for example, getting into um, a more selective journal or in uh, making sure that your grant proposal or your proposal for a scholarship is more successful to writing a more impressive report. Um, of course, this doesn't come overnight. If you want to do this yourself, it takes a while and in some cases also real talent. I mean, there's some people in my lab that I'm very lucky to have that are very good at that. So that's, that's a skill to hone. Uh, maybe also make some friends that are very good at it. And finally, you can also use professional services, uh, but they are usually several hundred euro for each of those. So that can get expensive very quickly if you're not at a very rich institution. So I think, um, you know, these don't need to be pieces of art and they don't need to be every time like completely overwhelmingly beautiful. But I think if you just move your attention to display items, for example, as we have over the last years, I think you will see that over time uh, they do improve. And I find it's definitely worth it for delivering a more convincing package as a manuscript or uh, as a proposal. So I hope you found it, found it useful and spread the news so we can all look at better and um, more enjoyable figures overall. So good luck with your next figures. Hi there! If you like this video, don't forget to click like down there and also remember to subscribe the channel and feel free to leave comments. See ya!